dude, this tattooed teenage alien fighters from Beverly Hills episode review is like totally intended for an adult audience. On Molecula. On Molecula. On Molecula. <laughs> On Molecula. <laughs> Hello there, heroes. I'm the Orange Ranger, and surprise! I've been hinting at this for a while, but a lot of factors tied in to making this happen. I've had a lot of requests to get these reviews to episode 20 before I switch back to Power Rangers, and it just so happens that episode 20 is the end of disc 2 of these DVDs. However, there was one little additional factor that pushed this over the edge. Today, Friday, February 21st, 2020, is the sixth anniversary of my very first Power Rangers episode review. Essentially, the sixth anniversary of me becoming the Orange Ranger. That's right, six years ago today, I dedicated an episode of my now defunct vlog, Almost Interesting, to reviewing Power Rangers Super Mega Force's first episode. That went very well, and six years later, here I am. It's an anniversary where you all, the heroes that have made this channel what it is, deserve the gift. So why not give you what some of you have been asking for? So indeed, I'm reviewing two episodes of Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters this week, and then next week I'll be reviewing episode 20 alongside the first episode of Beast Morphers 2.0. Which, by the way, Beast Morphers 2.0 is what I'm calling the show for my reviews. The official title, I do know, is Power Rangers Beast Morphers Season 2, but I think that's a little bit wordy, so I'm going with Beast Morphers 2.0. But huh, that's kind of fitting if you think about it. The first episode review of Beast Morphers 2.0 and my review of Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters episode 2.0, episode 20. Just very fitting. So let's take a look at how the Sentinels cover up Swinton's capture from his dad by taking a look at episode 19, The Cover-Up. On Molecula, Octodroid has brought Gorganus what it thinks is a galactic sentinel, seeking a reward that Gorganus had promised, a small chest with some jewels in it. However, that is not a sentinel, and Gorganus zaps it away. I think the gag was that was intended to be a Roman centurion, but they don't mention it. Anyway, Gorganus wants a galactic sentinel, and so he has commanded, and so he shall be obeyed. It's a line that Gorganus has been using lately that I was waiting for a chance to mention. In the cafe, we get a scene that feels like it comes from far earlier in the season. And it may have been intended to come from earlier in the season, but not actually that far. Wikipedia has this listed as the 14th episode instead of the 19th. My point is that we get these really long glances at each of the Sentinels' personalities. Lori is planning a school dance with two other girls, Swinton is playing a computer game with two other guys, and Gordon and some business friends are practicing putting since more deals are made on the golf course than in the boardroom. We don't really get a lot on Drew besides her being a waitress at the cafe, but she does make a snarky remark about the dance. Their tattoos flash, everybody but Swinton making up some little white lie excuse to get away. Lori has to drag Swinton away, saying he's getting a call from his Uncle Nimmy, you know, the one with the tattoo, but he's oddly upset that Lori made him tell a white lie. I'm pretty sure by this point in the season, Swinton has told white lies to get to a portal lots of times. That continues in the cave as Swinton is annoyed with Nimbar about constantly having to make excuses and white lies. Nimbar weirdly explains that on his destroyed homeworld, white lies are literal. Any member of his species that lies begins glowing bright white like a spotlight. Anyway, Octodroid is back, and Drew can't believe it since they've destroyed this monster already. I checked. Even according to the Wikipedia episode list, at this point in the season, they had fought both Neuragula and the Sorcerer three times each. He recycles them, Drew. Get used to it. Short fight with Octodroid, in which it only manages to wrap itself up in its own tentacles. Octodroid used wrap. Octodroid was confused. It attacked itself in its confusion. As the Sentinels prepare to leave 
for some reason, Octodroid manages to get a tentacle free and grabs Apollo. The three Sentinels portal back to the cave while Apollo is taken to Molecula. Weirdly, nobody, not even Nimbar, notices that Swinton isn't there for a solid minute. And even when they realize it, they can't possibly put together where he could be. Now you see that evil will always triumph because good is dumb. In a scene weirdly cut from the previous, like this is where they came back from commercial, but it was just badly timed, the Sentinels theorized that Swinton may have figured out a way to bypass the cave and portal directly back to Beverly Hills. They head back there, checking the cafe, because there's only three places that Swinton can possibly be. The cafe, Drew's house, or the school. Anyway, he's not there, and again indicating that this feels like it was written to be much earlier in the season, Lori wonders if they're in over their head with all of this weird science stuff. Weird science. Swinton's dad comes in looking for him. The two are going to meet for pizza and to see a movie to celebrate his birthday. Gordon and Lori stumble through pretending to not even know Swinton before suggesting that perhaps he went directly to the pizza place first. His dad takes Swinton's computer, surprised that he forgot it, and heads that direction. The Sentinel's tattoos flash, and this time Nimbar uses the rare upstairs portal. Nimbar has good news and bad news. Good news, he knows where Swinton is. Bad news, he remembered how to press rewind on his surveillance VCR and learns that Apollo was captured by Octodroid. <gasps> Emperor Gorganus has Apollo! Uh oh, we're in trouble! At Drew's house, we get a genuinely nice little scene as the other Sentinels are frustrated that they can't do anything but sit and wait for Gorganus to make his next move. They're all seriously concerned about what Gorganus might be doing to Apollo. And here's a first for this show, heroes. A sentinel on Molecula. And he's sitting in Gorganus' chair holding a bowl of jello. Uh-huh. Anyway, Gorganus is trying to recruit Apollo, saying Nimbar has lied to him, though he doesn't say about what in particular, and promising riches and success and happiness and rewards if he joins him. Apollo looks curious. I'm hesitant. Clearly, Drew is still desperately worried about Swinton as she declares it's payday and opens her check. It's a gag about her being annoyed that the cafe stops paying her whenever she goes to save the world. Then Mr. Sawyer shows up with two police officers. Swinton is still missing, and this is now a police matter. They try to throw them off, but every witness has told them that Swinton was last seen with them leaving through the back door of the cafe. Of course, that's not very reliable testimony because they didn't leave the cafe through the back door. They left through a portal, but hey. He tells them not to go anywhere, but of course, their tattoos immediately flash. They make a rather clever excuse about all having to need to use the bathroom and then jump into the portal. Fast forward to the fight as the three actually have a rather easy time with Octodroid, but then suddenly lay their weapons down and surrender, declaring that Octodroid has won and they are Gorganus's prisoners. So Octodroid takes them all to Gorganus. The other three all lay the Gorganus praise on really thick. Apollo says he can't believe that they would betray Nimbar, and Scorpio says that she would stay loyal to Nimbar, but she has to wash her hair tonight. Earlier on, she had mentioned to Swinton when they were talking about white lies that sometimes girls will say they have to wash their hair when they don't want to go on a date. It's just something I didn't mention at the time. Swinton puts it together and declares his loyalty to Gorganus as well. Gorganus extends his hand to be kissed. Okay. And Apollo grabs the wrist control, portaling them all back to Earth. You magnificent bastard, I read your book! The Sentinels waste no time, quickly forming Nitron. Nitron wastes no time, almost immediately losing its shield, but then wiping the floor with Octodroid, zapping it away. The episode wastes no time, as we cut immediately back to the cafe. Mr. Sawyer and the cops come in, and Gordon thinks very quickly on his feet, telling them that Swinton made them promise not to tell where he was, because he was buying his dad a birthday present. 
Gordon slips him the gift under the table, the jewels that they receive from Emperor Gorganus as rewards for their pledges of loyalty. They call them New Age gems that can protect him from evil. Drew brings a birthday cake out of absolutely nowhere, and they sing for he's a jolly good fellow as the cops just leave. Signs now. Episode 19, The Cover-Up. Prose, real sense of concern for Swinton, the Sentinels visiting Molecula, and Gordon's cleverness. Cons, wobbles back and forth in terms of seriousness, the Sentinels just pulled a plan that they never discussed, and just kill them! This was a step back up. Not a dramatic one, but better. The cover-up gets 3.5 signs out of 5. I really did enjoy the sense of concern that the other Sentinels had for Swinton when he was captured. It's kind of played for a gag a moment later when Drew opens her paycheck, but in that moment they were really worried about what an evil creature like Gorganus might be doing to Swinton. This show has very distinct locations where only a few of its characters appear. For example, Nimbar only appears in the cave, and until now, only villains had appeared on Molecula. That made it a very nice little surprise to see the Sentinels on Molecula in Gorganus' fortress. It's always weird, by the way, seeing the Sentinels normal-sized, but transformed. This is only the second time it's happened, I believe. Or maybe Gorganus and Lechner are actually giants. Hmm... Things that make you go, hmm. And it was really quick thinking on Gordon's part to come up with a story that explained where Swinton was, and even providing Swinton the gems that Gorganus had given them to be the birthday present that he was buying. Gordon is often portrayed as slimy and greedy, but at least he's clever. The scenes I mentioned with the Sentinels being concerned about Swinton, immediately followed by Drew's paycheck gag, and then the police coming in like this was a kidnapping, give this episode a really inconsistent tone. It's like they couldn't decide if they wanted it to be a serious kidnapping story, or a very cute, aw, look, he gave him jello story. In the end, it was both, which also means it was neither. It's a bit of an inconsistent tone, is me point. The Sentinel surrendering to Octodroid to get taken to Gorganus was a very clever plan. The only problem is that plan is never mentioned. And now, don't get me wrong, if it was something that Taurus had done, and then Centaur and Scorpio immediately follow suit, okay, that's something that Taurus came up with on the fly and the other two realized what he was doing. But the three of them do it in unison as if it was something they had discussed earlier. And on a show that spends almost too much time with its characters discussing their plans, that was weird. And for the second straight episode, Gorganus faces a question that I don't think he can answer. Why didn't he just kill them? This time he had all four of the Sentinels in his palace. Kill them. Yes, they tempted him with temptations of being his personal fighting force, but Gorganus has monsters. He doesn't really need a fighting force so much as he needs them out of the way. In the end, not a bad little episode, some nice team building and more of that involvement of the real world that I keep saying that I like. It wasn't the best episode by any means, but it wasn't all that bad. So next time is going to get awkward for a minute. You see, my next Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters review is going to be alternated between two episodes of Power Rangers. So it's not time for me to tell you about the 20th episode of TTAF, but instead it is finally time to take a peek at the first episode of Beast Morphers 2.0, Believe It or Not. No, the name of the episode is Believe It or Not, not Believe It or Not, it's time for me to... to, to anyway... Steel Steel finds finds evidence that that Evox has has returned, returned, but cannot cannot get get the other other Rangers to believe him. That is going to do it for not only another Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills episode review, but my official Orange Ranger video 6th anniversary video. Heroes, from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for being around. I know that some of you have been with me all six years. I greatly appreciate that. If this is your first episode, I greatly appreciate that as well. 
I'm gonna be honest with you heroes, it's not always easy for me to do this. I have some logistical issues that make it a little difficult as well as just some other issues that can get in the way of making videos and just sometimes it's kind of hard. But it's just remembering how much you heroes have supported me, how much you heroes engage with me in the comments and on Twitter, and how much you look forward to my videos, hearing from you at conventions that my videos make you happier, that you look forward to them. That means a lot for me, and that's why I've been doing this for six years through YouTube monetization, demonetization, starting a Patreon, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, all of the things. That's why I've been doing this, and that's why I'm going to keep doing this, because it's just so amazing to me to know that there are those of you out there so invested in this channel and so happy about this channel and so supportive of me as a creator. So on this occasion of my sixth anniversary, I just wanted to say thank you so much. And I hope you enjoyed your anniversary gift. Now that the video's over, you can let me know down in the comments what you thought of this episode of Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills, as well as my review of it. And until next time, hand switch, may the power portals protect you. Happy anniversary, everybody. First episode review of Beast Morphers 2.0. That is going to wrap up another Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills. That is going to wrap up another Tattoo Teenage Alien Fighters from Beverly Hills episode review. And Heroes, yeah. I'm not being facetious. I'm being honest with you guys when I say, with you heroes, 